So last month I spent living in Jakarta, Indonesia and after tracking all of my expenses for the last 30 days, the final cost shocked me. I couldn't believe it. Good morning and welcome back to my third cost of living video. I can't believe it's my third one already, wow. So for the last six months I've been traveling full time and last month I spent living in the capital city of Jakarta. Now while many foreigners choose to fly directly to Bali and skip over Jakarta, I chose to do the exact opposite because I wanted to see what Jakarta had to offer for foreigners, for tourism, and most of all, how much would it cost me and you to spend an entire month living there? Now, make sure you guys stay till the very end because I'm gonna be sharing how much it costs to live in Jakarta, but also comparing that to Bali, Indonesia, as well as Mexico. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down seven different categories that I track my expenses with. Now, if you guys see me looking down below the camera, it's because I have all of my notes, all of my expenses written down so that I can share it directly with you guys. Now, the seven categories that I was tracking were transportation, groceries, restaurant, uh, phone and data, entertainment, and of course, miscellaneous costs, which is just anything that didn't go into the other categories. So let's go ahead and start with the biggest expense of the month, which is going to be my accommodation cost. Now, I lived in West Jakarta, and I chose to book a place with Airbnb. Now before moving to Jakarta, it was a little difficult trying to find accommodations within my budget because for the past three, four months, I was living in Bali and only spending $360. So I knew that going to Jakarta, it would, I would have to spend a little more money. So I increased my budget by about another $200, well, actually a little more than $200. And I ended up booking a place for $667 for the entire month. And it was an apartment in a high rise building. It included a living room, private bathroom, a kitchen, um, and a full bedroom. Because for the price range of about three or $400, you're basically getting a studio and it wasn't as updated as the one that I found. So I was very happy with it and I was willing to pay just a little more so that I could get some work done and have a nice living area to, to basically edit all my YouTube videos. And so in addition to that cost, I actually also booked another hotel room so I could make a video for you guys, which was the smallest hotel room in Jakarta, Indonesia. If you guys haven't seen that, I will link it right above for you guys, but that cost me an additional $11 and that brought the total accommodation cost for the month to $680, which is a little more than Bali and Mexico. Um, so make sure you guys stay to the end and I'll share my comparison between Bali and Mexico compared to Jakarta. Now, what I recommend you guys do is actually stay in central Jakarta or even in south Jakarta because for one, it's more pedestrian friendly, meaning there's more sidewalks for you to walk on rather than walking on the street, which I found myself doing quite a few times. And in addition to that, the public transportation system in Jakarta is actually pretty amazing. And if you guys haven't seen my public transportation video in Jakarta, I highly suggest you guys do it because as a foreigner coming into Jakarta, I had a lot of questions and not that many answers for how to use the public transportation system. So if you guys are interested in seeing that video, I will link it above for you. I think you guys are gonna find a lot of value from it. But now this leads me into the transportation costs for the entire month. Now, one thing you guys need to know is that renting a motorbike or renting a scooter in Jakarta is a far more difficult than say Bali because Bali is very tourism centric and Jakarta doesn't get as much tourism I believe compared to Bali, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you want to rent a motorbike or scooter, you're gonna have to probably find a local or know a local that lives in Jakarta that'll be willing to rent it out to you. So I found myself basically using the public transportation system there as well as Grab and Gojek and just the taxis there. So my final cost for transportation was $121.35. Now just to give you guys an idea of how often I use taxis, uh, I booked 36 taxis which cost me an average of about $1 to $3, uh, very affordable 
but uh, yeah, 36 taxis for the entire month. It's pretty crazy. And uh, also, I highly recommend you guys use, where is, where is it? Hold on, give me a second. All right, here we go. So, this is called Tap Cash. I mentioned this in my public transportation video. It is highly, highly useful. <laughs> and there's many other types of, of tapless cards that you can get in Jakarta. Just watch my public transportation video so you guys know which ones are available to buy in Jakarta. But you can use them for basically any type of public transportation in Jakarta. Uh, MRT, Trans Jakarta, even the train to Bogor if you want to pay that way. Um, and you can even use it for the toll roads. So if you have a taxi driver and you want him to skip all the traffic, hit the toll road, just hand him the card and uh, it'd be a lot quicker to get to your destination. It's uh, come in handy many times. That cost me uh, $8.92, um, including a 100K top up, I believe. For those of you that are interested to know what the cost of using public transportation is, um, it's about 25 cents US dollars per bus ticket um, to use Transjakarta. So if you have credits on this, it'll cost 3,500 IDR per, per ticket basically. And uh, you can use this with multiple people on Transjakarta, but not on the MRT system. The MRT system though, it'll cost you anywhere between 20 cents US dollar to one US dollar, depending on how many stations you pass um, because you get charged based on how many stations you go to your final destination. Um, so yeah, overall, I think I spent more on transportation costs this month compared to Bali and Mexico because uh, again, I couldn't rent a scooter or rent my own type of private transportation basically. So had to had to get around that. Now moving into groceries, I only spent $35.02. One thing you guys will notice is that my eating out cost is far more expensive than my grocery cost because I just don't really spend too much time cooking at home even though I did have a kitchen in my Airbnb. Um, I, it was just more convenient for me to order food because it was just so affordable and it was very quick and efficient. Uh, I got all my favorite foods delivered to me to my apartment and so I only really spent uh, money on groceries when I went to the supermarket to basically just stop, stock up my fridge with drinks, sodas, waters, juices, whatever it may be, or just snacks. And so moving directly into the restaurants and eating out costs, uh, yeah, this was a pretty expensive month for me. It cost me $348.42. Let, let me know down in the comments if you guys spend more or less per month eating out. But uh, you know, for an entire month, uh, having every single one of my meals basically delivered, uh, that's pretty affordable, I think. But uh, just to highlight one of the costs of eating out at restaurants and bars, uh, me and Cantania went to Sky Bar, which is one of them, one of the high-end uh, restaurants and bars in Jakarta. It's a rooftop bar with one of the most beautiful views of Jakarta at night. Uh, so highly recommend you guys visit there for uh, dinner, for sunset. Um, but you are gonna spend quite a bit of money. Now typically the drinks at Sky Bar are gonna cost you about 150,000 IDR which is about 10, 10 to $12. And any of the main dishes are gonna cost you about two, 200,000 to 500,000, depending on what you're ordering specifically. So one of the coolest places, highly recommend you guys visit there if you're in Jakarta. Now getting into phone and data. I have a service provider called Telcom Cell. It's one of the highly rated uh, service providers here in Indonesia for cellular data. And uh, one thing I can tell you is that living in that Airbnb, that huge high rise building, I got absolutely no, no service in that building at all. But just to give you an idea of how much data will cost you, I spent $13.42 on data. This is actually um, on the expensive side. I would usually spend only about $7. So $13 probably got me around 30 gigs of data. And the reason I had so much data this month is because the Wi-Fi in my apartment was just terrible. I couldn't upload any YouTube videos. And so I had to basically go out to Starbucks or go outside and hotspot my computer every single time to upload a video. And so that's what killed all of my data for the entire month. 
but typically I would only spend about seven or eight dollars a month on data with Telcom Cell. So really affordable in Indonesia to get data. Um, but this month was just a little more expensive. Now, moving into the entertainment costs. Uh, for entertainment, I really didn't spend too much money because most of my content was just focused around food and experiences in Jakarta. And you know, ex most of the experiences were just me walking around exploring the city. And so I only spent $29.49 on entertainment. Now, what does that consist of really? So me and Kentanya went to Asia Park in Bandung when we visited her, uh, basically her hometown. And that cost $7.85 for two people. So per person, that's about three, $4. Uh, we also visited the Sulphur Lakes in uh, just south of Bandung, which was just absolutely mind-blowing, so stunning. If you guys are going to plan on visiting Bandung, just drive two hours south and visit the Sulphur Lakes. It's just absolutely incredible. It's a site you will forever remember. And that was uh, a little more expensive. That cost $17 for two people. Then we also visited uh, the deer park, which we got to experience uh, feeding the deer up close and personal, uh, something I will forever remember as well. And for two people, that was $4.64. So very affordable on that end. So overall, not very expensive uh, month on entertainment costs, which I'm very happy for. <laughs> and then last but not least is gonna be the miscellaneous, which is basically anything that didn't go into the other categories. And I spent roughly about $30.35 in total for that. And that includes basically my masks for wearing masks outside. That was like $5.01. My haircut, which is the most I've ever spent on a haircut. Uh, $12.14 of traveling abroad. In Mexico, it only cost me like $5. In Bali, it'll cost me anywhere between like $1 to $5, depending on if I'm going on the street or to an actual barber. And uh, then right before I left for Jakarta, I had to get a rapid test uh, to make sure I was negative for COVID. And that cost me $8.92. And that was actually on the cheaper end because rapid tests will cost you anywhere between $10 to $20, depending on where you are uh, in Indonesia. So that was the cheapest I've ever gotten a rapid test before leaving for Bali. And last but not least was my laundry. Uh, there is one thing I will say about laundry. In Jakarta, especially the area that I was in, it's, it's a little more expensive to do laundry. So for laundry in Jakarta, it cost me 60,000 rupiah, which is roughly $4.28 to do three and a half kilograms. In, in Bali, three and a half kilograms would have it would have only cost me maybe like 30K, 30, 35K, I think. But you know, they did a great job. I was very happy with it. And so this brings me to the end of the video. The total costs for living in Jakarta, Indonesia for one month. How much did I spend? So the grand total is $1,258.05. Let me know down in the comments if you would have thought this number would have been a larger or smaller. So for just to give you guys an idea, I typically budget living abroad for $1,000 a month. So I just went maybe $250 over. And one thing you guys should know is that this actually doesn't include flights. So flying in and leaving Jakarta is, is obviously going to be different for everybody. This also doesn't include uh, things like your visas or healthcare costs. This is just basically your flat out living expenses, your, your accommodation, your food, your laundry, everything of that sort. And another thing you guys should know is that for my apartment, I didn't have to pay for internet. I didn't have to pay for water or drinking water for that matter. That's something usually you have to pay for extra if you're planning on living in a villa, such as uh, living in Bali, for example. You do have to pay extra for that sometimes. Now, let's compare this to places like Bali as well as Mexico, which I spent some time in as well. I spent roughly about $418 on my accommodation costs and comparing that to Jakarta is obviously a little more in Jakarta because there's uh, fewer options uh, less tourism so the prices are gonna be a little bit more comparing Jakarta to Mexico 
uh, accommodation cost is pretty close. It's only about $100 difference in Mexico. It's $574 versus, you know, $667 just for my apartment in Jakarta. Uh, transportation costs actually a lot more in Jakarta because I couldn't rent my own private scooter. So I had to use public transportation like buses as well as the MRT system. So in Bali, that cost me $73. In Mexico, I didn't have a bike, but we did rent a car for a quick trip around Mexico. Groceries were relatively the same because, you know, for groceries I just get drinks, sodas, juices, and, and whatnot. So roughly the same for Bali as well as Jakarta. Uh, a little more expensive in Mexico because I did have to prepare for hurricanes. Uh, so grocery cost was just a tad mi bit more expensive, you know, $59 versus around $30. Next is restaurants. So Bali I spent only $212 and Jakarta was 300 and uh, sorry, how much? $348. Yeah, so about $100 more in Jakarta, but that's of course because I'm eating out every single day. I'm, I'm ordering all my foods and having it delivered to my place. And then pretty much exactly the same, around $300 for both Mexico as well as Jakarta. And of course, last but not least, my phone plan. Uh, phone is pretty much the same because I still have the same uh, service provider for my phone, $7 compared to uh, about 13 what is it $13 so roughly the same for phone and data comparing Mexico to Jakarta $25 for Mexico and $13 for Jakarta so Jakarta is a little bit cheaper for phone plans I think uh, comparing it to Mexico but still very affordable if you're comparing it to the United States but the total of course is a big difference Bali compared to Jakarta in Jakarta um, I spent $1,200 and Bali, I spent $776, so it's quite a bit of difference. That's like, what, three, or sorry, not three. That's like five, $600 difference, basically. But one thing I will let you know now, though, is that I have been living in Bali for almost six months now, and I will tell you that that monthly cost of living video was my cheapest month in Bali. Um, to give you a realistic uh, monthly cost of living in Bali, I'm averaging right now about $900 to about $1,000 per month living in Bali. So if you really think about it, it's not that much different compared to living in Jakarta. It's roughly about two to $300 difference for me at least. It may be different for you depending on your lifestyle. So if you guys made it to the very end of the video, please consider subscribing. Comment down below, let me know what your thoughts are on this monthly cost of living video. If uh, you would have spent more or do you think you could actually spend less than $1,200 in Jakarta? Comment down below, let me know what surprised you. So with that being said, I am now in Bali. As you guys can see, the background's a little different, not in Jakarta anymore, but I still have a few more videos from Jakarta I wanna create and finish up editing here. And then I'm gonna be planning my next trip around Indonesia. So make sure you guys are subscribed, Make sure you guys hit the like button, comment down below any questions you guys are gonna have, and I will see you guys next week. Peace.